Okay, next on my little list of uh, cars that require a bit of attention is Will's lovely Mark One Escort. Presently on a Pinto with a pair of Weber DCOE Twin 40s. We are going to um, rip the cutters off, throw those away. Nice set of Gen V DCOE throttle bodies, Max ECU. Um, we're going to change the fuel system. Going to put some AN6 all the way from the front to the back, leaving it under the car. It is a road car, so we're going to try and be a bit, um, you know, it doesn't need to be a race car. Nothing needs to be a race car specification. It just needs to be a good road car. Hence, really, why he's getting rid of cars and just had nothing but a pain in the ass, um, styling and just general carb nonsense. So yeah, we're going to bin all that. Um, my video this time I'm going to do in two parts. It's going to be on the same video, but the first part is just going to be a quick run through of what we're doing, bits and pieces going on, show you a bit on the dyno. Second part of the video I'm going to go into a bit more about how, why, um, a few little bits and pieces on how we do some of the things that we're going to do on it. Um, so yeah, let's get these carbs off. Okay, time to get the carbs off. Um, we're going to use the original manifold, whip the carburetors off, um, all of the fuel lines again, not needed. So let's get all this off now and uh, move forward. are off now um, all the studs I've removed from the manifold and um, we'll be bolting the Gen V straight to it about the studs um, I found uh, on the water port from the center of the manifold we found like a, a few noughties so we're gonna rectify this I've got to do something with that anyway because I want to put a coolant temperature sensor on the engine so um, I've ordered a couple of bits and pieces like a T um, that we'll be able to mount the original hose back from the center of the manifold and I'll be able to put a coolant temperature sensor teed into the bottom of it. Um, so that's all in hand, got to wait for some bits from there. I noticed when it came in that the exhaust manifold was leaking around the ports, so I've decided I'll just rip that off. I mean, I've got to take that off anyway. I'm going to put like a um, an LSU 4.2, like a wideband sensor downstream, just down past the collector. So I needed to come off anyway in order to do that properly, but I've noticed all the studs are pretty poor um, so we're gonna we're gonna replace all of those new gaskets um, we'll go ahead and drill the the manifold and take that in place next um, we can get that back in okay so we've got our boss welded in the manifold for our lambda sensor um, some of these studs are a little bit crappy so what we're gonna do is we're gonna Remove all of these studs, um, replace them with some new ones, torque them up nicely, put some new gaskets on, and then refit our manifold along with our nice new lambda sensor. Um, hopefully, it keep Will a bit happy. Um, yeah, let's get on and do that. Okay, so manifolds in, new studs. This one's heli coiled already, and it's um, it's not, it's a little bit shallow, but I don't want to entertain moving that. It seems okay at the moment. It's torqued up okay. So, we're gonna put our nice new LSU 4.2 down in there, just beyond the collector. Um, once we've got this screwed in, I'll reconnect the rest of the exhaust, and then we'll do the rest once it's up on the ramp, I guess. Um, so yeah, happy days. Okay, so I've pulled off the inlet manifold from Will's Escort. Um, I mentioned earlier we need to put a um, coolant temperature sensor on the vehicle somewhere. Coolant temperature sensor is one of those sensors we definitely need with fuel injection. Um, has 
massive influence on fueling, um, startup, all of those things. So we definitely need one of these. Um, obviously, the original car didn't have one. So um, commonly, the Pinto engine boys use this port. Um, this comes out from the cylinder head. Um, so we're going to use this. Um, I, I ordered a um, T. This is an FFM. It's 3 8 BSP fitted in this. Um, so order this T. Um, uh, you can see actually, I got this, there's a web here, I've filed this web down the other side, cleaned up this thread very slightly um, and trimmed just very slightly off this um, female edge. So now this will screw in in fact. Um, so I'm going to screw this in here. Um, I'm going to use um, Bond Lock, it's B577. Um, this is great stuff, it's an anaerobic adhesive. Um, it's for water and metal pipes specifically. Um, it, it, it just gives us an excellent. I've used it for years. It's, it's great stuff. It's up to 180 degrees C, um, and it doesn't care about fuel oils, any of those things. It's perfect for an engine bay. So we're going to screw this in here, um, seal that, come off um, about this sort of angle. That angle will then um, avoid anything on the engine. It'll avoid the throttle bodies. It'll avoid the breather pot. Um, into that, sorry, I've got a 3 8 BSP hose tail. This goes to a 15mm, which is the size of the pipe. Again, I've trimmed just very slightly off of that, but we'll use the bond lock on there. That'll go in there. Um, I've then bought myself a blank, like again, 3 8 BSP, which will go in there. I'm going to drill and tap that with um, M14, uh, M12 by 1, sorry, which is what our Bosch coolant temperature sensor has. Um, and then we'll seal all this in there. So the sensor will be here, hose tail in there. Um, and then the manifold will be ready to throw back on. Um, happy days. So let's get on and do that. Right, yeah, whilst the manifold's off, seems silly not to uh, test fit the Gen Vs. Um, say you're starting to mess around on the car, you know, we don't want to risk scratching that car anyway. Um, and there's various bits we need to trim, make fit. The, um, the fuel rail was a different width, and they give us a, a little piece of pipe which we've got to cut and such like. So we'll have a dry run, test fit on these. Um, and go from there. So we've ordered um, the majority of the bits and pieces from Genvy. We've got the pair of DCOEs, the standard length. We've got the fuel rail with the um, the AN fittings. Um, one of them's AN4. Um, this side is M14 by 1.5 or something. I can't remember now. Something like that. But we've ordered a, a fitting to have the actual um, fuel pressure regulator on the rail. Um, the other side will just be the AN6 fitting, sorry, um, back to tank. So we've got the fuel rail. We've got the the TPS um, and we've got the trumpets. So we'll have a dry run first. I've got to just first clean this up with a bit of Scotch Bright. Um, like I say, this is a dry run first, just to make sure everything's fitting. Um, and then before we assemble properly, we'll clean everything down properly, um, get everything fitted up, and then throw it in the car. So yeah, another one of my fast forward videos. Okay, that's the bodies all mocked up, um, trumpets are all on, everything's talked up sensibly for a minute. Um, so we're going we're gonna to put the injectors in now um, and ensure that the fuel rail is correct um, and chop that middle piece in a moment. So um, the injectors we're going to use are um, injectors I use loads and loads. They're 550cc, they're massive for this job, but they're a really good quality injector plenty of future proofing and this will idle absolutely fine with those size injectors in um, so yeah we'll we'll now assemble those assemble the fuel rail um, hopefully you can see it all from there and then that's the bodies essentially oh no we're gonna do the uh, gonna do the, the throttle cable as well the cable setup but once that's done they we can test fit them on the car and then that's another another tick in the box okay so there are three sizes or lengths of injector that you'll likely come across I thought it was just a quick time to show you how to measure one um, you measure your injector length by essentially below the top o-ring and above the lower one. So I already know what size this is, um, so give or take, there we go. So it's a 48mm injector this one. So Gen V supply um, some little spacers, 
um, which will which you'll be able to use for any type of injector that that you're likely to find. Um, these will be for a 60 millimeter injector, but what they've done is they put this little divot, this little ring around inside here, um, so that we can make use of our 48 millimeter injectors. So what we're going to do um, is we we're, we're at this point here where we're going to start fitting the fuel rail. So I'm going to remove this now so that we can we can cut a couple of these in half, um, file them back so they're all the right height. Um, but what I will do first is just assemble the fuel rail so I can see how much I've got to cut our little pipe um, which transfers the fuel between the two main lines. So let's do that now. Okay, the last part of assembling the Genvi, like the whole inlet system really now, um, the fuel rail is on, bolted on, the spaces have been cut, injectors are ready to go. Um, we've just got now the throttle linkage assembly, we've got the single cable assembly, um, it's all fairly self-explanatory, um, I've seen lots of posts over the years about assembling these, but they're really not a problem, they come with a with a really good instruction manual, it's not a problem, it genuinely isn't. Um, so we're going to bring our cable in from the rear of the engine, try and make the engine bay look that little bit tidier by not having the cable sort of running round. So um, let's assemble it in that manner first. Um, again, let's, let's go for gold. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that's the Gen V's fully assembled on the inlet. Everything's now um, cut, engineered correctly into size. Um, it all works absolutely perfectly. Um, everything's swinging around as it should be. Um, so yeah, we can now strip this apart, clean everything up, um, and assemble it for good. And then we can throw it on the car, uh, make sure everything fits. Okay.